G'day guys, welcome back. Uh, before I get started, and I'm a little bit late, but I just want to say a really big thank you to everyone who donated to my channel in February. Appreciate that. You guys are awesome. You help me buy some more paints and some more medium and keep me going in canvases so that, um, yeah, I can do these videos for you. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Love you all. And so exciting, look what's arrived in the mail. My Americana Decor Satin Enamel White. So that's it there. Uh, eight ounces, 236 mils. It's, um, it's quite a thin paint. It's thinner than my Globals. So I'm going to play with that today because I've been looking forward to using this. Lots of people are using it. And, um, yeah, I bought mine on Amazon. It took a little while to get here, but it's finally arrived. Uh, my pouring medium for my cloud mixture, this is this is the cloud pour. I've got Floetrol, Liquitex, pouring medium and water. So they're equal parts. And in this bottle, I've got 300 grams of Floetrol, 300 grams of Liquitex pouring medium. 300 grams of water so that's 10 ounces 10 ounces 10 ounces put it all in there give it a shake and you're good to go righty oh i am using three parts of that pouring medium to one part liquitex basics now i know you know there's a lot of people doing this um with the satin enamel and uh you know cloud pours things like that um, and it's all well and good saying add water to consistency, but if you don't know what consistency you're doing, it's really hard. So that's why I'm doing this video today and hopefully it'll give you a little bit of insight into the actual measurements. Um, I like to, to measure and weigh, that way I know that I'm getting a consistent result. Because if you don't measure what you're doing, and you get a good result and you think oh well what did I do how much did I put in of this and how much did I add of that so that's why I'm doing this and I'm showing you how I've measured everything and how much of everything I'm using so that hopefully you'll be able to recreate it because Liquitex Basics I think is pretty easy to get anywhere in the world hopefully um, I will do another trial with the global paints as well with the same cloud mix and the satin enamel and see how that goes just as a little experiment but today the Liquitex basics and I'm just doing my corners here as you can see just to help with some coverage this is a 40 by 50 centimeter canvas which is a 12 by sorry 16 by 20 inch and I think I'm going to need about well, I wasn't quite sure how much I was going to need, so I've got about 700 grams of mixed paint. So what I did was, in my cups, I put 90 grams of my pouring medium, which is 3 ounces, and then I added 25 grams of Liquitex Basics, and then I did 5 grams of the white enamel. So it's basically three to one. So three parts pouring medium, 90 grams, to one part paint, three to one. And then these, well, it's, you can do four to one. Mine's sort of, I think I probably put about seven grams in. I was trying for five, but by the time I sort of stopped the flow, it was about seven. So four to one, four parts paint, one part enamel. So got that? Hopefully. Right, oh, let's start layering. Now this dark one, the dioxys in purple, it doesn't have any enamel in it. You can see the difference. That's got a little bit of the white in it. So when you're doing this, pick dark colours because it's going to lighten. No point having light colours and then they're all, it's too light. So I'm just going to start with a little bit of the dark. I'm going to keep a bit of that in case I need it for my corners. If I need any more. And I'm just going to start layering down. I don't think I'm going to need all of it, so I'm going to keep some of it. It was just because I was doing three to one, I thought, oh, it's just easier to do 30, uh, 60 grams and 30 grams, uh, 90 grams and 30 grams, three to one. 
and it's just easier that way. I'm just leaving a little bit in the bottom, about a centimetre. I don't want too much paint because I want to be able to stretch it out. And I'm just going darkest to lightest here. Leave a little bit of that as well. A little bit left. Probably 700 a bit much. 700 grams is 23 ounces. So those are my lovely colours there. We have cadmium yellow light hue and the orange is cadmium orange hue, quinacridone magenta, that's a semi-transparent, that one's semi-transparent, that one's semi-transparent, phthalo blue is opaque. And my dioxazine purple is opaque. So two opaques and three semi-opaques or semi-transparents. Okay, I'm just going to do a, a straight pour. So just pour into the middle. No rings, just pour. Here we go. I'm starting to get a little bit of the blue coming out. Hopefully I haven't got too much paint because I actually want to see some of the darker purple coming through in the middle. If you've got too much paint, the colours that you've put in last, as in the yellow and the orange, you're going to tilt them all off. So it's a bit of a trial and error to see how much paint you actually need. So this will be my first little trial. Let's catch the drip so I don't leave a trail. Okay. Woohoo! Don't all run that way. Why are you all running that way? My table mustn't be straight. You can't really tell when you're doing the big flip cut pause because my mix is so much thicker. It's not until I do one with a really thin mix and I realise that everything's running off. Let's just bring it back to the middle a bit. Put that stick under there. Okay, so I'm just going to let that sit. Got a little bit more of my dioxazine purple if I need it. But I think with this amount of paint I should be able to get a good coverage. I must have dropped something in there. Look at that. <laughs> it's reacting. <laughs> And I'm going to give it a bit of a torch just to pop some bubbles because I poured that pretty fast and I can see some bubbles. It's a good idea just to let the paint sit for a few minutes if you can. Hopefully all my cells aren't going to be on the one side where the yellow is. I think it's quite important to have a mixture of semi-transparent and, trans and um, opaque colours, just the way that they react together. The semi-transparents are going to pop up to the surface and the opaques are going to sort of fall back to the background more. Alrighty, I should probably start tilting. I would like to give it a little bit longer, but I know you guys are busy, aren't you? Impatient? Just get on with it. Go off to this corner first. I haven't decided if I want to go over the corner just yet. Kind of lost all my my orange. It was on the edge. It may well have blended with the pink, the magenta, and kind of lost it. That's okay. That was what I mean by if you've got too much paint on your surface, when you come to tilt, the colours on the outside, will, they'll be the first to go. I can see a little bit of orange in the middle there, so it looks as if I've kept some of it. I 
I'm just going to do up to here on all four corners first and see what we've got. It's very thin paint, it's very messy. <laughs> I don't like having messy hands. <laughs> Mm, I might turn it around just because it's easier for me to tilt away from me. I'll hang on to the push pins underneath. I'm going to torch again, see if there's any other little formations that want to come up under here. And now that I've moved the paint, the bubbles have sort of moved as well. I don't want to torch over that yellow anymore. It's quite reactive. But um, yeah, I should really wait a few minutes for things to happen, but yeah, when you're doing a video, it's not so easy to wait, is it? Off we go to the next side there. to get rid of that little pink blob. I'll either have to um, tip it off or just cover it like that and say goodbye. But I think I will be tilting over the corners because I've got such a lot of paint still on the surface. But uh, yeah, this is, this is my first try with this mixture. Uh, with this size canvas so it'll, it's an experiment I really like these colors though and I, I don't really want to lose that purple but we'll see I'd have to get rid of some of this yellow here it's, it takes over quite a lot that yellow doesn't it okay right ho let's go for that other little corner there and I think we're going to lose some of the yellow because it's rolling back over itself. And I'm going to come back because I don't want it all to go. Now that looks strange having purple there. I think I'm going to take that yellow over the corner. Doesn't want to flow. Go yellow. There we go. Needed a bit of encouragement to go. Okay, I'll turn it around and I'll go this way a little bit, I'll bring the weight into the middle and then go that way. These are very unusual looking, aren't they? It's very strange. <laughs> Getting some little cells up on the sides here where the paint's moving, uh, rubbing against each other. See, I've got way too much paint on here. I haven't been able to, to move it. Even this middle bit, I'm not, I'm not able to move it because there's so much paint in there. That's all right. I'll know for next time. Cut right back. So this was 700 grams. Um, maybe next time 500 grams would be better. And something in that yellow. No, it's just a bit of paint that's not mixed in properly. By the looks of it. 
Better not chase it around and make it worse. What's that? I don't know if I like that yellow, that big yellow blob on that corner there, you know. Let me see if I can get rid of some of that. I'm just not liking that big yellow blob. a little bit of the yellow there's something in there it's ruining that middle bit I'm just going to find my tweezers so I've tipped so much paint off I could have got two pores out of that paint that I've made um, where are your tweezers oh, can't find it Oh dear, oh dear. It's better if you can pick things out with a, with some tweezers rather than trying to chase it around. I'm just ruining this, aren't I? Trying to cover it. Oh, what else can I do? Talk to you again. So much paint this middle section here hasn't really changed it's just stayed there which is a shame um all right i'm just gonna have to go for it and get rid of some of this paint and see what will actually happen with me stretching it all out probably stretched things too much now see how this is going all um, it's all stretched and blurred and out of shape. Let's go for that other corner. There goes all my dark purple in the corners. So I'm not really getting the reaction that I thought I was going to get. I did up here, but it's a bit much. It's, it's too much. And I don't like it. I'm going to get rid of it all. Waste of paint, isn't it? Off you go, big yellow blob. Off you go. All right. Let's bring in the weight of it back to the middle now. So now I've hardly got any paint left on the surface. It's not moving very much at all. Okay. I think when I did last in similar colors to this I didn't layer them I just did a dirty pour and I think I got a better reaction from that just moving this down a little bit Cover that corner as well. And come back. So the more you move your paint, the more it's going to 
react. Just moving it again, stretching it out. So this is probably how much I needed. I didn't need all that other paint, that's for sure. Definitely have to have another go at it and not make up so much. Okay, so I think it's going to keep changing um, over the next little while. So um, I'll leave it and come back to it in a little while. And see how it's going. Give it its last little torch to pop some bubbles. see what happens in a little bit. I'm glad I've got the dark background. I was really worried that it was going to be too light with me having all these little pastel colours. You know, add the white and it's gone quite pastel, but I'm glad that I've got the dark background. That's what I was saying to you, the opaque colours will fall to the, the background and uh, the semi-transparents will come up and those will be the ones that usually create the cells. All right, I will leave it there and I'll come back and show you in oh, maybe 15 minutes. We'll see how it goes. So it's done a lot uh, in the last oh, probably 20 minutes or so. With the little bits of paint that I had left over, I had a little bit about that much in each cup. I added more of the pouring medium. So instead of it being now three to one, it's more like four to one. Really, really thin. And I was going to pour over this, but I think it's okay. I really like how these cells up here have popped up. So I've sort of got that yellow around there. And then it, as it comes out, it gets darker through here. Lost a lot of that purple background as the cells have grown, the background's shrunk. So I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. And I'll keep these paints. I'll move this, I'll grab another canvas and I'll go again with a four to one mix with less paint and see if I get a better result with that. So I will be right back. <laughs> 